Good afternoon. Or good morning, or whatever. Mr. Cobb, if you would uh, just introduce yourself and your associates. And uh, after that, we have the <coughs> one question is, can you operate within the mayor's proposed budget? And once that is, you've answered that, the floor is yours for your presentation or questions or whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Terry Cobb. I'm the director of the Department of Codes and Building Safety. Uh, with me uh, tonight, uh, if I could, I'd like to introduce members of the top management team at the Codes Department. Uh, First of all, in the, in the back of the room, we have uh, Bill Herbert, the uh, Metropolitan Zoning Administrator, Bill Penn, who is Assistant Director over our Property Standards Division, Roy Jones is uh, to my right, uh, is Assistant Director of Administrative uh, Services, and Wade Hill, uh, who is Assistant Director over all things construction related within the department and for the past several years has been the acting director of the codes department as I've been on assignment in the mayor's office. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank uh, employees and managers of the codes department. Um, they're a group of people that are working every day uh, in the interest, number one, of public safety and for customer service and the continued economic development of the city. Uh, remind the council that in the current fiscal year we've done uh, five significant uh, things uh, that represented changes over the prior years. Uh, the first was, uh, you'll recall last year on July 1st, we transferred the alarm registration uh, uh, functions from the clerk's office to the codes department and with that, the, that portion of the uh, clerk's office budget and personnel, um, much in the same manner as we did, uh, or as the Council approved the transfer of the health inspectors from the health department about three years ago. Uh, that's gone very well. We've just completed our first cycle of alarm registrations, uh, handling it very much like the uh, clerk's office had handled it the prior year. Uh, we've got uh, some automation and some improvements that should be in effect prior to the next uh, cycle. Uh, we also, uh, beginning early last year on July the 8th, uh, you'll recall we opened the Development Services Center and we created truly a one-stop shop for building and development permits and we pulled departments together from across the Metro government into one office uh, to handle all permits uh, that, or, or all questions uh, that might relate to construction and development. Uh, during this fiscal year, we've also been working on the replacement of the Kiva computer system. And as you know, that's uh, uh, the backbone of a system for permits and inspections. It's our land database. It includes the GIS system. It's the system that the tax assessor draws uh, information from to send out those property tax bills, which represent approximately half of the revenues of the Metro government. Uh, that system uh, is developing well and within the next couple of months should we expect it to go live with a full replacement of the current system. Um, and, and finally, the fourth item, the council recently added um, a process for uh, permits for short-term short rental properties. Uh, we think we're uh, over the hump on that. Um, we started on March 31st. Uh, we didn't know exactly how many were coming. We anticipated maybe as many as a thousand. Uh, through uh, uh, the end of last week, I think we've issued 513 or 519 uh, permits. Um, and of the applications we've received, we've got about 85 to 90 percent of those permits have been issued. Uh, they're operational. Um, permits in the uh, calendar year. Uh, 2014. Uh, some of you know that uh, we've set an all-time record during the calendar year at 2.276 billion dollars. Uh, improved over the previous all-time record high we set back in 2006. And the improvement was 26 percent greater than the previous all-time record. In fiscal year numbers through 11 months um, we're projecting um, 2.47 billion with a month to go. 
Um, depends on what kind of month we have. It might be just shy of that, or it could be well in excess of that. But if it hits 2.47, uh, which is the annualized number, it'd be a 32% increase. I, I said all those numbers just to justify uh, the opinion that we hold that uh, construction and development in metropolitan Nashville is still accelerating. Um, especially when you consider that out of all those billions of dollars of permits we've issued, many of the cranes that you see on Nashville's horizon have not yet been permitted. They're, they're under construction, under grading permits, or a foundation permit. And they've got the cranes up in the air, but they haven't yet pulled the big part of the permit, the 95% part of the permit. So all you see all this activity, and we have all these numbers, but we're still not uh, uh, seeing the full effect of it. Uh, revenues, um, direct correlation between building permit values and revenues. Uh, we're already in excess of $15 million in, uh, in revenues for this fiscal year. Um, depending on the type of month we have here, could go much higher. Uh, that's noteworthy in that that's an all-time record, and it's going to allow us to probably kick in about a, it's, it's about $5 million more than budgeted revenues is what it amounts to. Um, expenditures, uh, the, my 26th budget presentation, but hey, who's counting, right? Um, once again, we expect to complete the fiscal year well under our allocated budget. One of the basic principles in operating the coach department, and I get one opportunity a year to say this, is that the coach department should fully recover its entire cost of operations from user fees charged for building permits, inspection fees, plan review fees, et cetera. We do that and we're generating huge surpluses. Um, the reason that's important to say and it's important to keep in mind is because it's the users of the codes department, the contractors buying permits, paying for inspection fees, paying for plan review fees, paying for license fees, they're paying for the full operation of the codes department and our pro rata share of the general operation of the metro government. And these fees are structured where they cover the cost of operating the fire marshal's office as well, I might add. But they also cover our pro rata share of the general services of the finance department, of the law department, of the personnel department. So hard costs and soft costs are fully covered and we're gonna uh, probably generate a surplus in the uh, neighborhood of $5 million plus this fiscal year. Like all other metro departments, we've been asked to submit, uh, or were asked to submit, a 3% budget reduction for the upcoming fiscal year. We did that. The mayor chose not to present that to you in his recommended budget. Um, in light of uh, the fact that permits and revenues are at all-time record highs by a substantial margin, revenues as well, um, we're producing record surpluses, and we have a record level of demand for our services. Uh, we don't believe that a budget reduction or a reduction in personnel is justified in the upcoming year. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Um, yes, we can operate within the budget proposed by the mayor and recommended by the mayor. And I'm here and prepared to answer just about any question other than one of those beach body questions that y'all been throwing around. I think we'll open up the floor, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Chair, and thank you so much, Terry. I just wanted to publicly thank you and the, the Bills back there, uh, Herbert and uh, Bill Penn, my, my neighbor there. Uh, and also Karen uh, helps me a, a ton, and you know she may not be present at these things, but uh, I really appreciate her and just all the services that we get from you guys. A um, couple of questions. I was just going to ask kind of how the one-stop shop has been for you guys and, and how that experience has been. It's, it's been good for us, um, but the important thing is, I think it's been good for our customers. Um, that's the positive news. Uh, it also, you know, I think it has set our city apart. Uh, I think that other cities uh, have been coming by and walking through our center with us. Um, uh, we, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina was in a couple of weeks ago. Chattanooga's been up to see it. Knoxville's been over. 
uh, Franklin, Tennessee has been up to take a look at it. Um, yeah, so that's good. But the, the, the real benefit is our customers feel good about it and having everybody in one place. If I have any reservations whatsoever, it's just the fact that we've been so doggone busy. Sure. Uh, you know, with this huge increase in activity, uh, we're still scrambling the jets every day to get take care of those customers. So. And with that, yeah, and it's obviously it's just been crazy. And thank you for bringing all this revenue. That's really awesome too. Um, do we have enough inspectors out there? Do, do we feel good about the number of inspectors? I wanted to say thank you to the council. We had a special allocation recently uh, where we added uh, five additional positions in the codes department. The council recently approved those numbers carried over into this proposed budget. Great. Awesome. Um, and then I guess the final question I had was uh, e-permits. Um, you mentioned in your accomplishments we've been pushing more uh, to online permitting. Is that something that we'll continue to grow and, and just make it easier, I guess, to have less foot traffic? Maybe helps you guys a little bit uh, just getting more stuff done online? It, it's uh, it's not optional anymore. It's, we have to do it because we don't have sufficient staff to do it manually. Um, is it 56 percent? Right. 56 percent of the permits we issue, and we're, we're talking about issuing ballpark 45,000 permits a year. 56% of those are done over the internet and the customer never sets foot in our office. It's handled entirely on their own business computer or home computer. And when the permit's issued, it's if they print it out on their own printer. Um, and it's worked quite well. And we have to continue because there's this constant uh, push to reduce expenditures and increase production and that's the only way to do it. And maybe is it, do we just need to keep marketing it, I guess, continue to, you know, pump up the marketing and make sure people know about that and contractors are starting to use it more, a little bit more? Correct. And, and this um, CityWorks project is going to provide them um, some opportunities that the Kiva system just didn't have the capability of doing. Uh -huh. uh, maybe not the day we go live with it, but things like mobile apps. Uh, weren't or aren't possible under the Kiva system, they are possible. And to give you a, an example of that, if you're a contractor and you have a mobile app and you activate the app, on your job site, the your handheld device and this app knows who you are and it knows where you are and it knows what permits you have open there and it knows what inspection you need next and all you have to do is push the button to request it and that's coming from city works once the, once the Correct. city works is all implemented and it's when are we expecting that um subsequent to the go live date but i would expect it within the first 60 days after go live great well thank you again so much I, yeah i just i really appreciate all the work you guys do and you're another one of those departments doing doing more with less and just doing a great job thank you thank you councilman glover thank you mr chair uh question for i guess either you uh, mr cobb or uh, perhaps uh, mr herbert uh, i know that we currently have some legislation that we filed to help you on the uh your, your advertising um to where it now stands more in line with uh, the planning uh structure um and, and there's been some discussion there are there any other things that, that this body can do to assist you because i understand that you're, you're trying to do more with less and and the revenues are there and 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 we're, we're thankful for that but is there is there any other small things that we may be able to do that administratively would help you uh, inside of your budget to curtail and and uh, maybe be a little more efficient or easy or, or more user-friendly I, I don't know of any offhand other than the one that's before you or uh, I'm not sure that whether you passed that on third reading we're or not, not there yet but we're not heading there, there yet <laughs> headed there that was just a matter of to reduce some administrative time in the office. Uh, there are probably a couple of others uh, that I can think of, uh, but they're pretty complex changes. Uh, for example, our, our department has seven uh, boards attached to it. Uh, I think that's probably more than any other metro department. Six of those are appeals boards. Uh, they do appeals, they do licensing, and such and I think there might be some economies of scale involved in combining some of those boards 
uh, maybe the licensing boards or maybe the, some of the appeals boards. Uh, in fact, uh, I, we put that whole idea out before uh, I think the mayor and the council, you know, probably, uh, I was back during the pre previous administration, a good 12 years ago, yeah. and um, they we didn't move it forward, but they did cut our budget, the amount of savings that we would have saved had we moved it forward. So uh, we didn't get any of the benefit of it, but we got all of the expense of it. So, uh, but yeah, there are some there are some things that we can work on. Okay. Well, if we can if we can look at that going forward, uh, obviously we again while we're in great economic times, I think it's to, it's probably wise to prepare for when we have the downturn again. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to start with saying thank you to the Codes Department. I know I have made your life more difficult this year, and y'all have been great to work with, figuring out the whole protocol for the short-term rental. And um, Bill, Bill Herbert back there has been had the patience of Joe with all the many phone calls, and Clint Harper has done a, a great job of dealing with the people that showed up early in the morning to get permits on some of those special days. So uh, thanks for all the work that y'all put into that, and I hope I hope we you feel like we've ended up with something good. It seems like it from from what I've heard. Um, with regard to that and the move toward e-permits, um, are there any issues with uh, verification of any of the information that's required if you do it by e-permit as opposed to having them come in or just, just making sure that, that the person who's applying is actually has, has what they need appropriately before they get that permit? Yeah, and we, we believe that in the initial year we had to do it manually. We had to have a conversation across the, the table. Uh, we do fully anticipate putting the renewals of those permits on uh, an electronic system, okay. and they can attach documentation uh, to provide to us, such as current insurance policy or such, and they can do that through the e-permit system. So we can uh, well improve, uh, <laughs> better streamline the process going forward. Um, and then second, totally unrelated question, you have as one of your goals to 10% um, reduction in the number of abandoned or inoperable vehicles. I know that's a really tough challenge. I've had a uh, an RV parked in one of my streets for six months at least, and uh, it's out of state tags. I don't know how you get it out of there, but I would love to... I would love to hear what your strategies are for, for making those improvements and um, if there's any way to apply those in the near term. Right. And, and that particular item, um, I'm not finding it here, but it's a goal. that one is those strategies, those, those goal statements, those strategic issue statements were prepared in uh, 2004, 2006, yeah. in that time period. It's a very old strategic issue. I think we're way past it. I think we're, in, in fact, we were, uh, we're doing, we were picking up and towing and demolishing several hundred cars a year when we started this. And I would imagine today it's just a few dozen during a year's time period. So, yeah, and, and we were much more capable of handling those. If you call those in, we'll go through the process. If they aren't, if they're public right-of-way and they're parked illegally on a public right-of-way uh, without tags or if they're demolished, if they're, they're not moved within a certain time period, then we can conduct a hearing and we have a contract to uh, have, have it picked up and have it demolished, get, get it out of your way. That'd be great. Good call. If, if it's a motor vehicle. Okay. Right. Okay. Councilman Westerholm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe uh, my colleagues have answered most of my questions, but I just uh, reiterate that I appreciate the help that you guys and your staff have offered me and, uh, and District 6 over the last number of years. So appreciate your work. Councilman Glover. Thank you. Uh, let me come back real fast. You said about $15 million in revenues. Is that going to be under your program revenue and non-program revenue combined, or is it just non-program revenue? I think the answer is combined. Combined, okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Tiger. Thank you. Uh, Gary, is your budget sufficient, or is there a better strategy 
to tack the continuing problem of illegal signage in public right-of-ways, and I would specifically talk about the the 1-800-GOT-JUNK, uh, college hunks, and some of these that you see all over town that just deliberately flaunt the laws, and we go pick up signs, and, and things do look better, but there's got to be a better way to, to to penalize these folks than the manpower necessary to keep our streets clean of litter. The, the our ability to be on top of that um, depends on our staffing uh, to a great extent. Uh, the subject came up last year in the budget process. I believe that in the last budget year we actually got a uh, we reduced our budget by two positions. Is that? I think so. I think it was two positions were cut out of our department, out of the property standards division in the budget year that we're currently in. So if we, if we want to increase responsiveness or you want to increase, uh, improve results, um, it's, it's hard to do by decreasing the resources that you put forward. So uh, yes, if, if we had more resources, we could do, uh, do more of that. The alternative, though, is these habitual offenders who seem just to flaunt the law, make them pay and penalize them. So do you have sufficient budget to get these folks in court if, if necessary or other punitive actions to discourage this blatant illegal activity? Uh, yes. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Chair Primore. Thank you all for being here today. I also want to echo um, thanking uh, Bill Penn, uh, Bill Earls, um, Ronnie Mitchell, your entire team. You worked tremendously hard uh, to address many of the issues as Council Lady uh, Berkeley Allen has um, also shared. Uh, my question is, well, I have several. Um, the first is around the daily permit reports. I know that you're uh, Tr trying to transition to another system. But one of the things that I and uh, my constituents find difficult is when those reports are sent to me by, uh, from Karen, um, the difficulty is you cannot utilize the find feature, meaning if you know, I have to go through the entire document uh, in order to find what it is that I'm looking for. You know, is there any um, move towards uh, making that easier so that you don't have to go through the entire document? You can utilize the find feature to uh, look for the specific item that you need. One of the very best advantages of the new city work system is it's much more map centric. Uh, you can you can bring up a map of the county and there will be pins on the map kind of like a, a Google map or if you're trying to find a hotel in an area where you've got pins on a map and uh, you can just hover over that pin and it'll tell you about the permit at that location or it'll tell you about the uh, the uh, complaint for the lack of a better term that we're processing or um, and it'll give you that information. You'll be able to click on that and it'll give you an expanded view of that case. Is there still any opportunity to work with um, our IT division to make the documents that are sent via email by Karen to all of us as council members where it has that fine uh, feature in it? Because you can take a PDF uh, and many of them you can click find and go straight to um, you know the particular item or, or whatever you want to search for. Is there an opportunity to improve that? Yes, that's what the city works computer system is all about. I understand that you had a mapping thing, but I'm talking about the document itself that's emailed to us that's supposed to be a quick search for us as council members. Can that document be worked on with IT to put that find feature on it? Uh, possibly so. I'll just have to talk to the IT department. Depends on what we ask them for. If we ask them to produce a list, of all the permits in a council district, it's going to produce a list of all the permits in a council district. Uh, it depends on how we ask for it, and it depends upon, uh, I think, the the ability of the system itself to be able to 
expand that. Um, uh, at one point, the council asked us for a list, and we provided. In fact, we we gave the list. Of, uh, Councilman Tigert probably remembers we used to used to get the old uh, green and and white sheets of computer paper with all a list of all the permits. That's the way computers did it uh, when they first produced lists. Then uh, we got to where we had a list. It looked more like you. Would, uh, a Microsoft Word document and we were able to attach that document to an email and distribute it. So it's just a matter of continuing to progress. We've been doing that progression over the years. We anticipate City Works will take it another step further. Well, I look forward to that document being emailed to be reviewed with IT uh, so that we can have that feature as council members. The other thing is, um, you know, you all have known I've been working on these strip center signs <laughs> for <laughs> since I got into office in 2011. And um, to much of my surprise, here we are four years later and tenants have moved out of a strip center and uh, these um, non-conforming signs which you say they were able to put up the particular tenant that put up a sign on a strip center that had uh, original signage approved at the time of the development of the strip center and since it's changed dramatically to boards and um, wood signs and things of that sort and just because the wood signs um, match the requirements um, those are allowed to replace the conforming signs that were approved at the time of the development like 10, 15, 20 years ago. What can we do to address that issue because over time that affects property values, that affects the um, uh, the image of the area tremendously because you start out with something very nice and in 15 years down the road you have a change of tenants and then it's an eyesore. And so what can we do as a government to ensure consistency in what was originally approved with those strip centers with the signage? Have you all looked at that? Well, we have looked at it, and we've had discussions, I think, our department's had discussions with you about it, and in the cases that we've looked at, it was a matter of the new tenant, the, the previous tenant had a legal sign. The new tenant came in and made application for a permit for a replacement sign that was also a legal sign, and we issued the permit for it, and they put it up, so there was no violation of any code or any law so it was allowed to be there. So uh, without changing the code or the law to say you can't put signs up that are made of wood, uh, that's the way to outlaw wooden signs. Okay, well now, you know, that same strip center is empty again, and you got the, the signs up there that were changed. Now that there's no tenant in that particular space, and, and the sign is up there, what can we do to, to move those types of developments back um, to what was originally approved? So that aesthetically, you know, they can meet the expectations that were designed originally. Well, they can, they can put whatever kind of sign on the building that is legal under the, the zoning code and building code. So I don't know if that's the particular type of sign that you would want to have them put up, but it will be the type of sign that's legal to be put up. Well, I would love for us to be able to look at that um, a little further and see how we can, um, if, if, if a strip center has been vacated by someone who did alter the original appearance of that strip center, how can we go back to some consistency, you know, once those um, um, storefronts are vacant again? Uh, I just would like for us to look at that seriously because, again, it affects 
the entire area, it transitions in a negative direction because that consistency and conformity that was originally approved has now gone away. The other thing is, um, I was going to ask the same thing about the uh, your goals. You were saying that you are looking to have a 10% reduction of a visual clutter of signs, debris, uh, trash, graffiti, 10% reduction in substandard housing, 10% reduction in the number of abandoned or inoperable unlicensed vehicles. Uh, I, Council Lady Dowell is not here right now and she wanted me to ask you about um, the issue of people uh, parking tractor trailers along residential streets and they sit there for long periods of time. We have an area um, that borders on District 28 and 32, which is Councilman Dominey and Council Lady Dowell's district that's right across the street from District 29, which is my district, where we have people who park a whole lot of um, um, tractor trailers along the street where people can't see and there are visibility issues and there are safety issues but yet when we turn those issues into codes uh, it's like uh, you know pulling tea to get anything done. What What is your recommendation for us as council members to be able to address that since that is something that is listed here as one of your go your reduction goals? No, reducing tractor trailers is not one of my reduction goals. Um, tractor trailers would be well, handled. Some of them are unlicensed and they're abandoned, so that's what I was referencing. Okay, if, if it's unlicensed, it's a tractor trailer, the police department can ticket it. They can walk up to it and they can write a ticket on it. Um, also, if it's interfering with visibility zone, public works department, has some requirements dealing with visibility from the intersection. But if it's an illegally parked vehicle, uh, still comes to the police department, not the codes department. Okay, well, um, hopefully we can get that um, issue resolved because I've received the emails from many constituents and like I said Council Lady Dowell uh, wanted me to also express that because she's been reached out to as well so hopefully with all of us working with you um, we can hopefully get that situation corrected in our district and lastly I just wanted to thank um, Bill Penn and his uh, department for working with me and Councilman uh, Bedney and all of the other council members uh, who work with uh, Judge uh, Allegra Walker. Uh, you know, we, we met almost a year ago, when, almost a year ago, in uh, Judge Allegra Walker's office to start uh, that particular piece of legislation. And I just want to thank you all for working with us because we are excited as council members in getting that on the way. And once it was um, made known in the media, uh, we had a lot of support from many other council members and people through Throughout the city so even from North Nashville people from North Nashville were even calling and emailing me so we thank you Terry and your department for working with us on that legislation thank you mr. Cobb seeing no other council members in the queue that concludes your presentation we certainly appreciate you being here and I also appreciate all the all you do and your department does and please if uh, Karen doesn't have uh, uh, caller ID don't give it to her because <laughs> she'd never she'd get tired of my calls 